Hi, let's continue with our class and in this video, I will introduce to you the machine learning workflow. So in order to demonstrate the end-to-end -end process of building a predictive model, machine learning on supervisor, on supervised learning, we have created an easy to comprehend workflow. The first step is to design the problem and then source and prepare the data with which leads to coding the model for training and evaluation and finally deploying the model. So in the scope of this class, we'll keep the model explanation to a bare minimum. And this is how this looks like. First, we need to design the problem and then we go through the source and prepare data. After that, we'll code the model and of course the next step is to train and evaluate the model and finally we'll deploy the model throughout the world so for everyone to use the model and it will prove that the model our model work perfectly in the real world environment so the first one is design the problem and once we identify the domain of work Brainstorming on the designing of the problem is carried out. So the idea is to first design the problem as a regression or classification problems. Once that is done, we choose the right target variable along with identifying the features. The target variable is important because it decides how the training will take place. A supervised learning algorithm keeps the target variable at the center while it tries to find a pattern from the given set of features. So the next step is source and prepare data. So data gathering and pre preparation is a painstaking job, mainly when the data sources are diverse and many. So with each data source, the challenges are different and hence the time taken to process it varies. Data sources with tabular data are the easiest to process provided they do not contain a lot of garbage information, whereas textual data is the hardest to clean because of its free flowing nature. So the next step is to code the model. So once the data is prepared and ready, we take up the task of choosing the right models. Most often the experts first go and with one baseline model to gauge the predictability power of the algorithm using the input features and the target variable. Then one can either directly try the state of the art algorithm or decide to go with a try error try and error method of trying to use all the possible models. One must understand that there is no right or wrong model and everything depends on the data. So encoding the data is randomly divided into training and testing. So the code is written to train the model on the training data set and evaluation happens on the testing data set. So this ensures that the model does not underperform when it is deployed in the real world. So now let's talk about evaluate the model. So model evaluation is the important part of the model where its usability in practice is decided. Based on a given set of model evaluation metrics, we need to decide after all the trial and error the best model. In each iteration metrics such as the R square value, accuracy, precision, and F score are computed. Usually the entire data is divided into the training and testing data with a third split for the valid validation set often on set also often included. So the model is trained on the training data and tested on the testing data. This separation ensures that the model is not doing any root learning. So in more technical terms, the model is not overfitting. Usually at this stage of the workflow, one could decide to go back and include more variables, train the model and deploy and redeploy. The process is repeated until the accuracy or the other matrix of importance of the model reaches a plateau. 
Now let's talk about the last step which is deploy the model. So once the base model is selected, the next step is to enable the model output to be used by a business application. So the model is hosted at a representation or stage transfer with the REST API. So these APIs are a way to host a web application as an endpoint that listens to any request for a model code and usually returns a JSON object as a response. So deploying the model is becoming an essential part of machine learning projects in the industry. So a model that is not deployable is no good for a company and perhaps merely serves the purpose of R&D. So an increasing number of professionals are specializing in model deployment, which is sometimes a tedious and complicated process. And that is all in this video. So I hope you enjoy it and I will see you in the next video.